Hello everyone and welcome to the Therat webinar series. Today we're going to be talking about computer imaging solutions and we're going to have a little bit of a showdown. And uh, we have two very well seasoned speakers with us today, John and Spencer, and each one of them are going to give uh, a nice detailed and insight look into some computer imaging solutions uh, and give some honest feedback about the solutions in the marketplace. It should be a lot of fun. I want to remind everybody that feel free to ask questions at any time during this webinar. We are going to gather them up, compile them, and at the end we will serve them up on a very nice platter to John and Spencer and they will they will, they'll give us an honest uh, assessment and try to help you guys get through the challenges that you're facing today. And in addition, we're going to be giving away uh, a couple licenses here at the end. And so make sure you stick around and we'll announce the winner on the webinar and we will we'll reach out to you after the event to, to work out the logistics. But with that, everybody, let's not hold back any longer and let's get into this. And we're actually going to kick everything off with a poll here. And so that way we can better understand what is going on. And so let's just give that a second here. Da, 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 da. All right. So the first poll here is what computer imaging solution are you currently using? So if you want to go ahead and take a look at some of those options, and we'll, we'll give it a couple minutes, or well, about a minute here or so to, uh, to gather some feedback. But it looks like uh, we'll say about a third of you are going with option A, which is a Cronus or Semantic Ghost. Um, about a third are saying other, and then we got some mixed results uh, in between everything else. We'll let these let it let it run for a little bit longer here um, as everybody gets their vote in. With about we'll say about 80% reporting. Uh, final results are about a third for Acronis, 35% uh, or other, 16% are showing MDT, and about 11% for Case, Landesk, and SCCM. So uh, let's see. With that, we're going to close the poll here. And we are going to hand things over to John, and John is going to kick it off by diving into uh, some showdown showcase or imaging solutions. All right, thanks, Brad. I'm really happy to be here today. Uh, first off, I'd like to kind of set the stage around imaging and, and take maybe a little bit of a walk down memory lane, look at how imaging has evolved over the years and what the world looked like, quote unquote, back then as opposed to it does now. Um, I guess you could say systems imaging really came into its heyday in the late 90s and early 2000s. Those were, you know, the heady dot-com bus times, boom and bust. When you think about what work looked like in, in those times, what characteristics there were about work, what you saw, I think, mainly was corporate campuses were really the hub and the, the central nervous system of the business. You had employees that came in, they worked their nine to five. Uh, you had lots of desktop computers fewer laptops and people for the most part used their work computers for work business and then left them in their offices or in their cubicle. And if you had folks that were on the, the road, you know, road warrior types like sales staff and consulting teams, those folks typically dialed into phone banks and, and modems on corporate campuses and got caught up that way. Um, IT wasn't trying to do any sort of management for endpoints over those links, no servicing of any significance. Basically, these guys were just grabbing emails and getting caught up on messages. And maybe if they were lucky and had a decent connection, they could synchronize files uh, over that, that particular link, and then they were done. That was really the extent of, of remote access there. In those days, also, the PC that employees had on their desk and their cubes, uh, it was there a lot longer uh, because proper computers back then cost a lot more, at least on a relative basis, than they do today. Uh, if you think about going to Costco, or Best Buy and, and looking at the computer aisle, you see, you know, these, these comparatively very powerful machines for 400, 500 bucks. And you think about how that stacks up in relation to the kinds of desktop behemoths that you bought in the year 2000 for $2,500 a piece and you bought 100,000 of these. It's sort of mind boggling how, how times have changed. So we needed to stay with that type of desktop hardware a lot longer back then simply because we needed to get a lot more of useful life out of that significant investment in those machines. How has all of that changed really now? Uh, well, obviously hardware is cheaper for one. Uh, now the corporate campus is still there, uh, but there's a, a large and, and growing contingent of workers that basically work from home. Um, I'm one of them. I haven't had an office in 15 years, and I, I'm definitely not alone in that. I think 
Uh, that's a fairly common occurrence, actually. So you have all these folks that are working from home in disparate locations. They may not connect to the true corporate campus network on any sort of you know regular basis. Uh, you've got road warriors. They're still out on the road, but they've also got their smartphones and their tablets. Many of them also want to have their own laptops. And these laptops, you know, they select them themselves and they work with their own styles and preferences. Uh, but of course, you still have to get your arms around them as the corporate IT department. You know, how are you going to get your hands on these machines and do a, a proper imaging support? Uh, how are you going to touch them and how long do you have before these guys absolutely have to have these back uh, in their hands? All of these are, are considerations for deployment of imaging today. If you add into that the fact that hardware is changing, like we said, uh, evolutions are coming at, at a breakneck speed, really. And the recovery in the economy is also a factor. We're, you know, having businesses growing and expanding and hiring and getting a lot more done. So basically, you, you put all that together and you have a situation where you have more hardware than you used to. And you have that hardware for less time. And that hardware has to serve people and exist in more environments than ever before. The things basically look different. But even though things look different, you might think that imaging your systems, deploying systems looks kind of the same. I mean, does it really matter what kind of box you put your deployment assembly line? Uh, you put it in your deployment assembly line as long as something useful and production ready pops out on the other end. And I guess it's true to some extent that imaging is a solved problem. You know, we had remote installation services, we had Windows deployment services, uh, the Microsoft Deployment Toolkit, all of these have been around for a while. The issue with those solutions, at least in my opinion, is that they're broad but not deep. And back in the early 2000s, I was part of a team of systems administrators in the Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering at a major Research One university. And we basically used RIS to deploy Windows XP onto everything we could get our hands on. Uh, it could be a, a machine that came in that we were going to stick in the lab. Uh, we were refreshing labs all the time. Uh, maybe we got a grant that uh, we had uh, a, a new machine to go to a grad student involved in that grant work. Maybe we would put the machine in the professor's office. It didn't really matter. We used RIS. We put XP down on it, and there you go. And it really worked for us at the time, especially considering the fact that it was in the box. You know, we'd already paid for the licensing, so it was free to us, and it was ready to go. But of course, RIS was so broad that it took a long time to get it working. Then of course you had to build different deployments for different hardware configurations that you saw. Uh, we had to deal with slip steaming drivers in the deployment. We couldn't multicast. Uh, all of that was just not possible with RIS. WDF adds on some of, of those capabilities, but still just a, a bear to work with. So what you end up with these tools is that you have systems that in the end, get deployed pretty quick if you measure only from hitting S10 or S12 and booting off the network. But the, it, that doesn't factor into hours and hours of initial configuration and then hours and hours more of staying on top of the drivers and new hardware configurations that are, that are coming out. Uh, and it's, sometimes it was easier on new hardware configurations, at least to us, to just deploy manually. And that's, that's kind of a space you don't really want to be in. There's also the Mantech Ghost out there. That's another popular imaging option. Um, to me, Ghost seems more oriented at recovery. You know, so we've got a machine, it's hosed, we got to get it back operational, so let's just ghost it and move on. You know, it could have been affected by malware, or maybe you gave a guy local admin rights that you shouldn't have, and he put some crappy software on there and messed something up. You know, whatever the reason, we use Ghost to get out of some sticky situations. And I think it's, it's a tool that works well in, in that context. But from a provisioning standpoint, I think Ghost is clunky. Uh, you know, I'll be the first to admit I haven't worked with the most recent versions of Ghost, but in my experience, we would not have looked to deploy any number of machines from scratch. You know, if they just come in off the shipping dock, we, we would not have tried to use Ghost for that. Um, there are other tools as well. The Cronus makes some. Uh, other third-party tools are there, but. To my mind, that most of them feel somewhat long in the tooth. They're, they're old, because imaging is kind of a soft problem, according to these guys. They're not you know, updated super recently, and I guess with the exception of the smart deploy folks that are here with me today, no one seems to have really thought about imaging in today's world, with today's challenges and today's really weird, heterogeneous environment. And of course, today is, is really challenging. 
Um, I mentioned earlier, much of my IT background is in the academic space. So, you know, in that frame of mind, we're in production and many times from August to June, basically the school year. And what we had was a limited, you know, summer window of six or eight weeks. You get uh, a whole bunch of labs refreshed, uh, new hardware redeployed, uh, and, and we had to make all the other changes that we were too scared to make when we had 30,000 people relying on us because school was in session. And then, of course, in, in academia, it's a little different because different, you know, departments under the university umbrella have different IT staff, and they kind of all run in the silo, and it's, everybody orders different hardware, and sometimes there's not a, a single license to deploy things everywhere. And it's really, it was a lot to coordinate, and, and often, because it was so challenging, we didn't do a very good job of coordinating also there's the corporate side uh, and that's not to say you know that the academic corporate nonprofit work and none of those areas have really sharp edges that they, they simply don't I see everywhere faces a lot of the same issues it's just how you fix them and how you address them that differs from you know sector to sector but on the corporate side uh, you got to factor in patching for security patching for quality for coverage from infection bad configurations bad installs and so on as well as actually getting systems to different types of users. And from an overarching perspective, we, we you know, none of us have the money we want or need to carry out what we think our mission is. Uh, you know, we, we buy cheap hardware these days from a bunch of different vendors. We have people buying their own hardware. They expect us to get them a quality image, have all of their apps and all of their personal data in there, and basically the time it takes to brew a cup of coffee. And then you factor in Microsoft, which you know, they've, they've changed everything around. They're force feeding Windows 10 updates, you know, down our throat every six months, nine months, or whatever. Uh, and, you know, they put the fear of God in you. If you decide to skip one of those updates, you'll, you know, you'll be unsupported. Uh, so you basically have to, to factor in staying supported in the operating system with all of this other stuff. And basically it means that the IT is stretched. You know, we're being reactive. We're not proactively planning. You know, these are challenges. It's the reality. We have to deal with them, uh, but what we need as, as part of our, you know, part of our tool set are the right tools that help us, you know, cut down some of this manual labor. And I think, you know, imaging tools are, are some of those critical tools that, that can kind of cut down on that, that manual drudgery. Not that deployment's really, you know, drudgery, but it's not shiny and new. It's an important thing you have to do. It, it, it's a high priority task, but it has kind of a low payoff. Uh, you have stuff coming at you. You know, maybe you are still based on Windows 7, but you have a bunch of new systems coming at you that are on KB Lake, and so you need to figure out how to put that stuff together. You need imaging tools that, that understand what's going on in the world, what types of, you know, different configurations you're seeing, uh, and, and you want to quickly deploy. You don't want to waste hours trying to scrub things off, you, you basically want to be a lot more efficient uh, in, in dealing with imaging. And the right tool is really important in, in that regard. In fact, if you ask me, I think, I'm outlining here, what I think your next imaging tool should, be, should really do for you. It should maximize your department's efficiency. It should be able to, you know, re-image things in 10 minutes. It shouldn't take forever to set up. It should be very easy to work with, very intuitive. It was to reduce your downtime that your users experience. It ought to be able to image a system very quickly without a lot of, you know, extra overhead. Uh, and it should really cut down on the workload you have for initially provisioning and setting up systems. That's the right tool set for you. That, that's the right tool that you need in your arsenal. And then you can move on to more productive things and move your business forward. So I hope that's kind of set some context for imaging as it exists and as it has existed and what I think the right tools for you know, getting imaging done and getting deployment done should be. So with that, let me turn it back over to Brad. I think we've got a poll here. Very much appreciate that. Thank you for that. Uh, some good stories in there. All right, everybody, why don't we jump into the second poll question here. How many computers does your team manage? Uh, less than 50, 50 to 250, 250 to 1,000, 1,000 to 2,500, and 2,500 plus. And so uh, file your feedback and I will uh, read the results here once we get a little bit of the population reported. And so da, 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 with about, well, people are voting really quickly here. <laughs> I was going to say 70%, but we're about 
a little over 80%. And we've got, let's see, we've got 10% are saying less than 50, uh, 30% are in the 50 to 250, about 40% in the 250 to 1,000. Uh, 11% are reporting about over 1,000 to 2,500, and 10% of you guys are actually uh, managing pretty large systems with over 2,500 computers. That is, Spencer, I don't know how you feel about uh, imaging, but imaging 2,500 machines, uh, unless you have some fancy software, is probably going to take you, uh, God, that would take you all day, probably not even all day, probably a month, but we're going to close this uh, poll here. And Spencer is going to show us actually how smart deploying some other services work. And I'm actually excited to see how this is going to help us. Awesome. Spencer, take it away. Very good. Thank you. Um, so just a little bit about a company background. I don't know how many on the call have heard of Smart Deploy or are familiar with us, but just want to sort of set a little bit of the stage and then we'll transition into a couple other slides and actually show you guys a, a demo here as well. Um, so we started this, this business as a privately owned and a self-funded uh, venture. We maintain that here today. Um, we have over 2,000 customers worldwide. Most are in North America. Um, but we started this business, like I say, about 14 years ago. And initially, we started as a pure play consulting business. Um, we were IT pros ourselves. And being asked by some of the largest enterprises in the um, enterprise technology businesses to solve some of these tough challenges. Um, we invested early and often in the virtualization space. If you think back 14 years ago, virtualization was really in its infancy. I believe that it's around the time that you know Microsoft acquired uh, software from Connectix to run VMs on Windows, and this was a really new and novel and cool thing. Um, we love virtualization, and we use it every place it makes sense. Um, one place th we think it makes sense, as you'll see in a minute, um, we use virtualization to start building images um, you know, start clean from a VM and make your image from that um, because of hardware independence reasons that we'll get into. Um, but that's kind of where we started and we thought, well, that's really great that we're getting um, VMs out to sales and marketing people to do technical demos and product demonstrations and all of that. But we thought, wouldn't it be cool if we had the same ben benefits of this hardware independence and run on thick clients and set up new, you know, is there a better way of ghosting machines these days than what we're, that we're doing right now? And so. You know, figured out how to turn off the hard disk duplicators and, and do this another way. And that's that's where this business was born. We've been shipping Smart Deploy um, since 2009. And, um, you know, we're just trying to make a difference. We, we're trying to um, take this kind of old school task that we've been talking about uh, of imaging and do things the modern way in the modern computing environment that modern IT would expect to find. In uh, terms of current landscape, um, a lot of you are probably using some sort of imaging tool, like uh, like Brad mentioned. If you have 2,500 machines to manage, uh, I bet you're not running around with a, uh, a DPD um, and manually installing Windows on everything. So um, we kind of look at the current landscape, and on one end of the spectrum, you may have some more uh, advanced or comp complex solutions that might be very broad, out of box, but maybe not very deep. And so. In some ways, these technologies can be expensive. Um, they can be time consuming to set up. Um, they can work like a champion for sure, but it's it's just on, the onus is on your organization to get those tools to be productive for you. Um, so I, you know, I think of Config Manager that way, where Config Manager can do you know full IT lifecycle management. It's a great, it's a great piece of software, but it also requires that you're the developer, the engineer, the tester, the, the database guy, the scripting person, um, and uh, usually teams that are successful with Config Manager focus on each sort of product um, feature as a as a silo and specialize and get good at that. Um, the challenge there, though, I mean, invariably, sometimes IT pros move on to a new gig and the business is left with the config manager guy that's no longer on the team and now they can't run their business how they used to. Uh, virtualization products and VDI type of products um, sound sexy and exciting. Um, customers want to think about a thin client. Customers like the thought of um, one software-based image working on everything, but customers also don't like the server-side uplift and uh, cabling and all the networking that it takes to get a VDI type of solution working, let alone the cost or licensing complexity. On the other end of the spectrum, you might have a ghost or a clonezilla or a fog or those types of solutions that do sector-based imaging, which for me don't work out well in a hardware diverse environment. You're making images on a per machine basis and a per department basis, and that's not productive. 
use those tools as a backup or a point in time snapshot of a physical machine that's business critical and I think you'll be happier. Um, another tool, you know, Microsoft Deployment Toolkit. Again, that can work like a champ, but um, and it's attractive that there isn't a licensing cost. But that doesn't mean it's free. Your time's not free. Your time spending digging around in TechNet and listening to the the pros on the forums and listening to you know all the uh, IT um, pros out there that have gotten good at using it. You know, you're kind of on your own. So if you truly have zero budget. That's cool. That's what I'm. That's the path I would go down, um, and then you know, get your expertise and work on that, and you make it be beautiful. Um, that's an option for you. Smart Deploy kind of sits in the middle. We try to bridge gaps between existing products. We try to give you the best Windows deployment experience right out of, of box with industry best practices baked right in at every step. Make it simple and easy to use to get this seemingly complicated task done simple uh, efficiently. Um, as you evaluate different tools that are out there, pay attention to, attention to how performant they are in the scenarios that you want to use them. Some work better in other, in other scenarios. You know, a, a ghost or a snap deploy, if you have a physical machine and you want to uh, archive a copy of it or you want, want to continually deploy to that exact specific machine, think about it. I mean, it's, it's a hard disk sector-based copy, so it's, it's going to be a beautiful um, copy of whatever the source was. Um, but as soon as you try to apply that to a different device, that's where all of your typical Windows deployment challenges come in. So if architecture cha changes, if chipset, HAL type, you know, even if the hard disks are different or different sizes, you have problems with partitioning, you, like, the wheels just fall off the bus and you need something else. Um, so keep that in mind as you evaluate these different solutions and that, you know, Smart Deploy, MDT, WDS, Config Manager, they're all using the Microsoft Windows Imaging File Format or WIM. Um, WIM is file-based, um, uh, hard disk sector-based. So when we capture and make an image with a, and make a WIM for you, it's just capturing the unique files that are stored. Um, so um, Smart Deploy's goal is to let you have a sing centralized single image management practice where you can seamlessly apply one image to any device in your environment. And you can do this a number of ways. Um, one way is from local offline media. Get yourself a DVD or a USB key or USB stick. Um, we'll make it bootable and have all the stuff that you need on that stick. Um, and that's super fast. It's really straightforward. It works great for some scenarios, not all. If you have handfuls of computers, it's the, it's the keep it simple stupid method of, you know, just slap in the USB key, flatten and reload the machine in 10 minutes and move on. Um, so that's a popular way of doing things. Um, Smart Deploy, of course, allows you to store images out on your network shares and you can likely have a, a SAN that you have highly available or something like that and pull your images down from, um, from those shares. Certainly, you can use um, Pixie Boot Machine, so if you want to boot a machine um, into uh, RP environment with your you know, network cable instead of a USB stick or DVD or something, uh, we support Pixie Booting uh, by using WDS and that can do you know, Pixie Booting for you and multicast and all that good stuff as well and the integration is really simple. Um, we do have the, an optional Smart Deploy client to do push deployments, so um, businesses like um, uh, education labs, uh, computer labs at schools, and et cetera, where you want to just multicast an image out to 50 machines in a classroom remotely and schedule that to happen at midnight and have them wake on land, et cetera. That's all supported perfectly in box with Smart Deploy. So you just install the optional Smart Deploy client and then re push images out to any machines that have that optional client. Um, lastly, I did want to touch on um, cloud services. Businesses are moving more and more workloads to the cloud. We know that. Um, we wanted to get in front of that and, and give customers the lowest cost way of leveraging a content distribution um, network to do imaging over the internet. And so we have those features are in the public beta with the product right now where you can use Google Drive, OneDrive, OneDrive for Business or Dropbox, your own personal Dropbox or Google Drive accounts that you pay for and manage. You could store your images there and push images out to your users using those, those services. Um, so I had a, a lot of customers say, wow, that'd be really cool, but hey, my, my WIM is 15 gigs. How am I going to push a 15 gig WIM file to my branch office? Well, we've done a lot of optimizations around that um, and excited that it's working out much better than we had anticipated. Um, and the, the real trick is it's useful for branch offices. Um, we're adding more, more capability there to get it to be useful uh, and great for home user even. 
so the customers can go, say from Windows 7 to Windows 10, pull over all their users' data and settings as part of that, all through the cloud at the push of a button um, without any on-site IT. So think about provisioning new devices, new hardware rollouts, as you know, uh, John mentioned, the economy is growing, businesses are growing, people are replacing old hardware, they're expanding, they're getting new gear. You need a good way of setting that up. Um, all the way through, you know, a simple PC break fix are all um, kind of good scenarios to think about when you're, when you're looking at something like a Smart Deploy. The way this works is Smart Deploy allows you to create a virtual machine, as we talked about. Um, we support all the major titles for Microsoft, VMware, and Oracle. On that VM, you're going to install Windows, run Windows, any version of Windows that you want, typically Windows 7 through Windows 10, even the latest creators update. Same, same story for server side if you want to deploy servers with Smart Deploy. Um, but the key is you make your VM with the OS and application stack that you want to ultimately end up on your target machines. Run Windows updates, put Office, um, put Acrobat Reader, whatever you want, and then just shut it down. Smart Deploy is going to take care of SysPrep and all the other magic stuff that you're usually left to your own devices on um, using other, other deployment tools. Now here's the cool part. Separately, we handle device driver management for you. So what that means is you get to download a discrete file for each machine that you want to deploy to, and it's just going to work. So you get the centralized single image management practice that you would out of a VDI pro product without the drawbacks of native performance on the endpoint. So you have this hardware independent image that we create for you, and that gets uh, applied to any desktop or laptop, you know, business class desktop, laptop, tablet, server, um, and we, you know, we're really the only vendor appreciably helping customers out with device driver management in any meaningful way. Regardless of what you use, you're still heading to Dell's and Lenovo's and HP sites, download, figuring out all the drivers that you need, oftentimes putting them in your image, um, and that's painful, it's tedious, um, it requires updating images more frequently than you need just to support a different device type. So philosophically, that's really the core, uh, a core use case um, and, and benefit of using Smart Deploy. So if you're a business that has diverse hardware, and, and a pretty, uh, pretty common golden baseline of, uh, of images that um, work for your different departments, um, Smart Deploy might be really interesting for you. Um, all right, so let's take a look at what this, what this looks like. I'll shift gears here and um, log into my other machine and we'll show you a quick tour around the actual product uh, to get a better idea about how this all works. Cool. So when you install Smart to Play, well, a couple of things. So all of you can get started with the free trial version of um, Smart to Play. Our trial is fully functioning. You can just head over to the download section and download this uh, free trial, and we'll we'll leave a call to action link here um, in the slides in a, in a moment. But the trial is fully functioning, and by default, it's set to last for a couple weeks. But we can always extend your your trial. Uh, there's a lot of useful resources on, say, this trial guide page. We'll basically walk you through everything. The point of Smart Deploy is everything is all wizard driven. Everything kind of has. Uh, uh, try not to ask you too many questions on any one page and really make this be a, you know, start and get next, next, finish to being successful doing, doing your deployments and this will outline how to, how to do all that. Um, when you install the product, uh, on first launch we'll generally take you to this activity section and the point of this is to help you build out even an initial deployment package. So even if you'll just follow these steps in order, you'll be building everything out and doing deployments before you knew what happened. Um, so the way this works is you build your golden VM like we talked about. We'll capture and make an image of it. Um, we'll take a look at this capture wizard briefly to kind of illustrate the difference of how Smart Deploy is going to allow you to be more sim simpler and easier where notice I get to just browse to this virtual hard disk so I don't have to run into my IT closet, find that Lenovo uh, X1 Carbon uh, and get its power supply and head back to my desk, clear space off the desk, plug it all in, make an image on that device, make sure it's connected back to my server, have network latency uh, issues and in, in making images, right? Th think about all those things. They're just logistical realities that happen to all of us in our day-to-days uh, using products like this. So notice this is simple and easy. I get to just browse to a VM. It's going to make my whim for me in a couple of minutes. Again, with this kind of next, next finish approach, it's just, hey, where do you want to save this? What do you want to name it? Uh, and away you go. This would you know, make your image for you. Um, so just keep that in mind and kind of, 
you know, the, the real benefit is because it's fast and easy to do, more customers are more apt to keep their images more up to date more often, um, which is higher security levels and less end user downtime, um, all good th things. All right, these platform packs. So customers tell us this is one of their favorite features of Smart Deploy. Um, so let's just say you've got a Microsoft uh, Surface uh, or several of them. You come in and just search for the Surface. You can see they're all listed here. You come in and select the one you want, hit download, and that's game over. So the image that we just got through creating will, is going to show up in your image library here. And the key is, again, these images are all hardware independent. Um, and are going to work perfectly on any one of these machines that we've downloaded one of those platform packs for. So I've got a bunch of these different platform packs in the library and let's let's take a look at how these work. So under the hood I can say right click and hit edit and you can see that we're building these out based off of WMI filters and queries so that we only ever copy over the exact drivers that are ever needed for that make, model, and OS. So think about that for a second. There's a, definitely a, a speed and performance benefit as well. Um, since we only ever copy over just the drivers that are needed for the target device, it's going to deploy faster because it doesn't have to sit through a bunch of plug and play IDs for a bunch of machines that don't match and skip a bunch of driver files that are never going to get it installed. So that's part of our patented boot time uh, driver injection process. Um, you'll notice we include even the Windows PE drivers. Well, that's kind of handy. Um, even for a fee, in some cases, that's the best that you can get from a competitive vendor that just gets the computer booted to Windows PE to try and image it anyway. So um, Smart Deploy includes all that and much, much more ability to flash BIOS and run custom scripts or tasks, anything you, that you want to do. A um, couple other things to point out. The ability to simply create an answer file. Customers love answer files. Why? Because they help with automation. And right out of the box, this will let you do uh, light touch or zero touch automation um, with, uh, with an answer file. So even, even your very first deployment can be automated. It marches you through all your deployment options. Again, you, know, you could do on-prem or one of these fancy cloud storage providers to do your imaging. Um, but it's just going to ask you the basic questions that you w w of what you want to do here. You know, computer name. Uh, you can automate that uh, com naming of, com of computers. Um, what time zone? What language you want to be in? Um, if you want to join a domain or an OU, like all that information gets stored in the answer file, so that even your very first deployment can be a light touch or zero touch um, zero touch deployment for you. Lastly, you could create some booter deployment media, and then you're ready to go. Um, so let's take a look at some actual deployments. Um, so if you install the Smart Deploy client, then you can push images out to um, various machines. Um, and here's a cool example where, hey, I want to use my Google Drive account to right click and hit Deploy Now or Schedule at some point in the future. Let's go ahead and choose Now. And I want to push my Google image out um, to that machine. I can allow the user to cancel the deployment as well. Go ahead and hit OK. And let's see if I can pull up that machine. It'll take a second to kick off here. Um, but basically what we do is we send the boot information down to that machine, restart it, change the boot order, and then rather than rebooting into Windows, we reboot into our version of Windows PE uh, and then pull the image down from that cloud storage provider. So pretty cool, pretty slick. That's a very brief demo of a zero-touch push deployment to a machine using cloud, cloud storage. So that, that could be your 7 to 10 and bring over um, all the user stuff all with one click is all, all in box with the product. Um, one last thing to kind of point out, here's another machine that I've got booted to our Windows PE environment. This deployment's attended, so I could come in and select deploy an image, and this will load the, the wizard that would have had all of the questions that we filled out in the answer file there, and uh, you could proceed through the deployment quickly and change your mind on any of those deployment options. Um, or just kind of next, next, finish your way through. So those are kind of two ways to do deployments. One uh, completely unattended push deployment over your existing network and another deployment that would be attended that you could you know, make a conscious decision about changing your mind as to any of the, the options that you wanted along the way. Um, so let me quickly talk about what happens when we do the actual deployment. So if I hit finish out on this thing, it'll show you status and progress and everything along the way. But Essentially, we run NTFS quick formatting across the drive and partition it out on a percentage basis, however the reference was built. We lay down the new image, copy over just the drivers that are needed for this machine, sysprep generalize in place, run any sort of custom scripts or tasks that you wanted, do a data migration if you wanted, um, and then a couple restarts later and the machine's ready to roll. Um, average deployment times vary, I'd say anywhere from 10 minutes to an hour, just depending on 
how well connected the device is, how fast the device is, how much software is in the image, et cetera. So I know that's kind of a wide range, but there's a lot of factors that play into it. Cool, so hopefully that gives you a general idea about what Smart Deploy looks like and some basic pieces of how it works. Um, we definitely encourage you to take us up on a free trial. Just head to smartdeploy.com slash free trial and um, see how it works for you. See if you find that it's uh, a productivity increaser and that there's um, value with uh, having a, a slick and easy way to set up new machines and accomplish some of these Windows uh, OS and application deployment projects that we've been talking about. Um, yeah, so give us a shout. We're here to help you through a successful proof of concept. You know, our goal in life is to make sure you, you, you know, get through a, a handful of deployments and have a conversation about it and see what you think and take it from there. So that's the majority of what I had planned to, to share with you guys here today. I know that we had one more poll question, so I'll, I'll turn it back over and then um, we'll talk about the, the raffle and take some Q&A. You're absolutely right. We do have another poll because who doesn't love a good poll? Uh, while you guys are taking a chance to answer this, uh, we are, are collecting questions. We've got quite a few in already, but if you have any other questions about what Spencer should offer, anything else about the deployment, uh, now is a wonderful time to get those in while you are answering this, uh, this poll. And just after we close this poll, we'll select the winner, and then we're going to dive into that Q&A um, because we've got – Spencer, you generated a lot of good questions here. But um, which, which is great. I mean, people are interested in this stuff, and obviously this is a pain point. And so uh, what are the biggest pain points when it comes to computer imaging? 70%, 70% of people are saying managing diverse hardware models. That's not all that surprising. Uh, we know that everyone in a perfect world would love to have the exact same machine across their entire environment. But we also know that we'd like the, the, the hardware cycles to be as long as possible, too, and manufacturers are updating all the time. So clearly, that is the big one. Um, and then we got about 35% are saying it's complicated, and another third uh, are saying it's too expensive. So a lot of, a lot of diverse uh, pain points, but that's, that's not all that surprising. So I'm going to hit close here on the poll in just a second as the last few votes come in. And then we're going to dive into the Q&A once we pick a lucky winner. All right, we're hitting close now. All right. So uh, the winner of the giveaway, and as a reminder, we are going to reach out to you, so just be checking your inbox, and we'll, we'll work on the logistics that way. Uh, the winner is John Peters. Congratulations, and we'll be in touch here in the very near future with that. And now let's get to what I'm sure Spencer's <laughs> most exciting part is the Q&A. So Spencer, first, um, my noodler for you is, just could you talk about how this will work with networks that route through proxies? Yeah, I mean, for, for us, I mean, for, uh, you know, the, the network push deployments, the way it currently is today is that the machines have to see each other from IP address or computer name. So if the network and routing is set up so that basically the two computers can talk, then we're good. Um, we know that that isn't perfect for everybody, and that's a, a bridge too far for some customers, so we're working on that. And what we're doing is we're going to improve our cloud services um, and include and improve that to add a, a cloud broker feature so that we'll remove kind of that VPN same network requirement so you can literally tar you know, target a, a home user that's not uh, that's at a or so one of your road warriors that's in a hotel and not on the same network or something and um, do a zero touch push deployment to one of those users. So um, today got to be the same network. Tomorrow um, use a, a cloud broker to to re alleviate that requirement. Um, so we're excited about that. But good question. Uh, next question is: Is this solution virtual or can it be physical too? Uh, most customers install Smart to Play on a physical machine. Um, they install, you know, Smart to Play product on it. They'll install some virtualization software to build your VMs and then subsequently capture images. That's the most predominant setup. Um, we do have some customer. I have a I have a customer that did a huge rollout on the East Coast um, that installed um, and configured everything within AWS. So they have Smart Deploy running on an AWS box. They have VM spun up in AWS. They use as references to build their images from and um, do mass deployments to hundreds of computers all the time with AWS. So um, really cool ways of implementing the product. We've designed it to be flexible um, and we can help you with some of those setups uh, to make sure that it's working as you'd, as you'd expect. 
Gotcha. And the next question is, uh, what about encryption? Is it supported, or how does that work with Smart Deploy? Yeah, there's a little bit of overhead with encryption. I'll just take BitLocker off the top of my head. Um, there's some pre-work that you want to do. There's some vendors that will help you with some of that as well. Like you need to make sure the TPM's enabled for BitLocker, for instance. Um, you have some choices about where you want that key to be stored. So you want to get it set up so that key attribute is stored in Active Directory is a really common way to go. Um, but assuming, you, you know, and we can help you with some of this stuff, but assuming you get through a couple of those hurdles, you, you could have that be, you know, a post image task. So similar to like MDT, Microsoft or Smart Deploy allows you to run any sort of custom script or task that you want. So PowerShell script or VB, VB script or a batch file or like, you know, anything that would execute from command line, we give you five different phases of deployment to, to make that run. So let's just pretend it's at, as first boot as, uh, in system context, if you wanted the drive encryption to, to happen, you could do that or log into the desktop for the first user, then it could kicked off. So some choices to make it be automated, but yeah, we, we play nice with that. Very good. Next question says, uh, let's see here. What about the saving of uh, partitions and images? Yeah, so the way it works is however you set up your VM with respect to partitioning is what will capture in the image and what will deploy to the target machine. So let's just say, for example, you create um, a VMware workstation virtual machine with a 60 gig hard drive and run basic Windows 10 setup. Uh, by default, I believe it has a, a 500 meg hidden system reserve partition up front and then it has the C drive. Um, assuming that's how, how you went, then that's what we would capture in the image. Again, keep in mind that WIMS are file-based in nature. They're not hard disk sector-based in nature. So all the rules you had to play by with Ghost and Clonezilla and Fog or any other sector-based imaging tool no longer really apply. Um, so that's we'll, we'll capture the partitioning scheme that you had in your VM. That'll be in the WIM, and then when you do the deployment, even though the, the target device might be a Surface Pro 5 with a 256 NVMe drive, we'll still use the whole thing. Gotcha. Uh, next question says, is it possible to keep an image patch between deployment and capture? Yeah, the way we handled that, a couple of, um, well, the way in, in general, the way that we would handle that is um, have customers update their VM and recapture it. Um, and then that, that win would have latest and greatest. Um, that said, you do have some options on image capture of appending back to an existing WIM so you can keep a rolling history of changes that you made. We also, for low bandwidth um, environments where, and where storage is a concern, we do have a patented ability to spit out deltas. So let's pretend you had a branch office that was 2,000 miles away and not well connected. You could run Windows updates, get that um, 10 meg KB on your VM, recapture it, and kick out a 10 meg um, uh, Delta WIM, email that over, and now all of a sudden they go to do their emergency re-imaging and it has latest and greatest. So there's some, there's some work that we've done around that. Uh, next question is, could you explain how licensing works with Windows and Office uh, with the deployment process of using images? Most customers have a volume agreement with Microsoft and they have a volume media they down download from the volume license store uh, and they have a Mac key. Um, they would enter their Mac key at one of three different phases with the product. Most commonly is when you capture and make an image of it and then the key, that Mac key just gets baked into the image and you're, you're all set. But you could also enter it in the answer file or deploy wizards. Um, if you just deploy without a key, it'll be in Windows Grace. That's the most common scenario. Office itself, um, you can in install Office and activate it on your on your VM, and that licensing should carry through. And um, some customers want to force auto activate Office and um, the operating system like during deployment, and that's a really simple two line set of switches to ask to your add to your answer file. So that's not a problem. Uh, next question is, can Windows 10 be deployed to an existing machine without removing the user's data? Yeah, so the way we would handle that is we have the Microsoft User State Migration Tool Components, or USMT, um, baked into the product. So as part of a deployment, you could do a hard link migration and keep all the user's stuff on the machine, or you could migrate to a temporary um, network location or locally attached storage. Um, I kind of like the locally attached storage or network location because then we get to reformat the whole hard drive, um, which I'm kind of a, um, I just think it's a cleaner way to go. Uh, the, but the, the uh, in place, you know, leave the user stuff, hard link migration works too. Um, it's probably a little faster, but so kind of benefits on both sides. But 
The short answer is we take a couple of buttons in the answer file wizard to keep all the user stuff around as you reimage the device. Gotcha. Next question here. It says, you mentioned data migration. How do you ensure that all data files are migrated? Do you have to back up and data file, or is it a network storage device? Um, the way that works, again, it's a USMT, and we're basically calling Microsoft's user state migration tool, and it will create a .mig, .mig file. Um, and again, that could be locally and do a hard link migration or push that out to a temporary data store. And then as part of deployment, we'll go through and pull all that stuff back down. Um, and USMT has the, the pointers to put all the files, ACLs, and properties back to where they're, they were supposed to go. Next question is, is, how do you modify and manage the default user profile? Good question, and that has changed between Windows 7 and Windows 10. So the answer varies depending on which OS flavor you want to do. Um, Windows 7, you would go and edit the default copy profile on your reference VM, um, and then you sysprep it once to seal those changes, and we have scripts and can help you through that. Um, and depending on what you want to do in, in 10, the answer is different. Um, so we can work with you even pre-sales uh, support to make sure um, like, I don't know all the stuff that you want. Is it the taskbar or things get pinned to the start menu or wallpaper set? So the, the, the answer varies depending on what you want to do in 10, but we can help you do it. Uh, next question is actually just kind of building on that is, can you change the default wallpaper and software and also browser plugins? Yeah, same answer. Same answer. We can, we can help you. And if they're doing it in 7, it's different than doing it in 10. But... Um, it's all doable stuff on, on your reference machine, and there's different ways to make sure that those changes get sealed and carried over into your whim and survive sysprep at deployment time. So we can help you. Uh, next question comes, it says, can Smart Deploy support imaging from a device instead of a virtual machine? Uh, we deliberately didn't go down that path of using physical devices as a reference computer, and I'll tell you why. Um, it would be really convenient because I totally get it. I have my, I have a machine that's sitting out there that's the way that I like it, and that's exactly what Ghost and Clonezilla and Fog and all the other sector-based tools taught us to do, um, and that was the best practice and the right way to go. Being that Smart Deploy is, you know, file-based and hardware independent, like those same rules don't really apply. So the the other piece is for us all the traditional disk imaging challenges of trying to make one image made from one device work on different devices. And that's where they all stem from because you're going to be taking a machine that has unique um, device drivers and registry uh, settings and hits that were pertinent to just that machine and you're trying to genericize it and put it on another machine. So in addition to just being dirty and might not be as performant uh, as it could be or being buggy, uh, a lot of times it flat out just doesn't work or will sit in blue screen. So we just kind of took an ax and cut that off and just said, hey, what if we just draw a line in the sand? Have customers start from a VM. I know it's a lot to ask to create a new VM, install Windows, run Windows updates. Um, it, it takes some time, for sure. I totally get it. But the benefit is you get to be clean. You get to be deliberate. You get to go through and make sure you see everything work the way you want. You get to do an audit and say, is this really what I want my end users to have? But assuming you do that once, like the time savings takes makes up for itself a million fold on the ability to deploy that to any other machine that you want. So minor inconvenience, I totally get it, but there's a bit, uh, there's a philosophical change for us, and we think that those trade-offs are worthwhile for the long-term benefit of a sustainable re-imaging practice to any machine that you want. Um, plus, it's a if you get used to it, it can be a lot more handy. Keep in, like You can just fire up a VM on any machine that you want and run Windows updates and recapture it and all that stuff. You don't have to go and find that magical you know, Dell Optiplex 9020 that's sitting under Susie's desk down the hall and make an image of that. Like It gives you um, more flexibility uh, and you don't have to buy or dedicate hardware for your imaging practice. So it's a change and shift from what customers are used to doing. Uh, we do a lot of education around that and try and make it easy and um, almost every customer that kind of makes that switch comes back and really raves about changing their approach to this because of what it allows them to do longer tail. Gotcha. Next question says, 
Um, can we use different cloud solutions that, instead of Google Drive, Dropbox, or what have you? Because we have our own Synology uh, replication infrastructure, so we can distribute WIMP that way. Uh, today, we don't have that functionality built in. Um, we've had to use the APIs that those cloud providers have published to try and make our code work with those four. Um, so you, you could do, you know, you could store your images on your own Synology and have it be on on prem most likely, just so long as, you know, the target device can see that image, um, be, basically be on the same network and pull the images from your Synology should be should be fine. Gotcha. Next question is: Is the licensing by image or by machine? So we try to license the software in the most flexible way that we can, and the way we feel it scales to meet small and large customers is you just buy the product for what you need, meaning the product's licensed on a per machine basis, meaning every machine that should receive a smart deploy image needs to have a license. Um, it's a one-time fee for the license, uh, so it's, it's perpetual. Um, and it's for unlimited use on the total number of computers that you've bought. So you can re-image those machines as many times as you want. You can make as many images as you want. You can make as much boot or deployment media as you want. Like you, you can do whatever you want with it. You just have, a, have to have a license for all the machines that you would re-image with the product. And then it includes support for at least the first year. You get a choice at the level of support that you'd like. And then on subsequent years, you could just renew the maintenance or purchase multiple years up front. And then we're all set up to sell directly to you or through the channel to your favorite software reseller as well. So we try to make that part really easy and fall in line with your budgetary expectations as well. Next question says, you mentioned migration from Windows 7 to 10. How does it pull employee files from Windows 7 into the new deployed image? Same way with USMT. It just grabs all the, it just makes a MIG file with all the user's documents and settings and makes a MIG file, um, put that out to a temporary share or locally attached storage or do a in-place hard link migration and put all, this, all the user stuff back where it belongs. Gotcha. Next question says, are there guides or tutorials uh, for imaging Windows 10 customizations, the start menu, taskbar, et cetera? Uh, we're considering Smart Deploy for its simplicity, but we're not too familiar with imaging. Yeah, that's that's the piece where we'll help you with um, the default copy profile. So um, just hit up sales or sales and or support at smartdeploy.com. Um, let's find out what uh, the specifics of what you want customized, and then we'll give you the right way to do it. Next set question says, can a complete image be updated incre on an incremental regular basis? Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. The, the workflow is to update your VM and recapture it and then you could append back to your existing whim or make a new one. Um, but we're the, said differently, I mean, we're still in the imaging business. So the target device would still get completely re-imaged to receive the benefit of those incremental updates, meaning Smart Deploy today isn't um, incremental application deployment software that's on our roadmap. Um, customers will want to, you know, just blast out Acrobat Reader to, you know, all 100 of their machines at the same time. Um, for us to do that, we'd re-image the whole device. So we hear you loud and clear. We'll be adding adding those features short of having WSUS set up. Um, there's a third party vendor call, called PDQ Deploy from Admin Arsenal. A lot of our customers um, use that uh, that software for some of those updates as well. Uh, next question says, I thought Windows 10 wasn't able to be imaged due to the design, UEFI, licensing, et cetera. So does it actually really work with Smart Deploy? For sure, yeah. So Smart, Smart Deploy supports both 32-bit and 64-bit operating systems in traditional legacy BIOS as well as the new UEFI standard. Um, there's some quite a bit of overhead that goes into uh, getting that set up. For example, the boot media has to be formatted you know, FAT32. Um, which you know has file size limitations and all that. Um, so, uh, yeah, um, Smart Deploy supports UEFI, um, so fully supports all everything from Windows 7 all the way through Windows 10, and yeah, not a problem. That's 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 what we're we're here for, and um, you should you should use Smart Deploy to reimage the device clean and don't do in place upgrades and don't let Microsoft force the in place upgrades on you on existing machines out on your, out on your network like. It's faster and cleaner, and more reliable to reimage it rather than to do an in-place upgrade. Um, and you know these different versions of Windows 10, they still sound the same, but they are net new, major version operating system changes under the hood. Um, and we can talk more about that with you if you'd like. 
Gotcha. Uh, next question is, what versions of VMware Workstation are supported? Uh, all the latest and greatest. I don't know the exact early version off the top of my head. It's probably version like 8 through 14. Uh, next question is: Are is bio are the BIOS updates supported with the image? Yeah, the way the way that happens is in the the platform packs or the platform manager. You'll see that you get to make, leave your image alone, um, but in that platform pack area, you're able to um, out of box. We'll have the stuff in there that will automatically update the BIOS for you. Um, and there's some intelligence built in there as well, or some daisy chaining logic, meaning. Dell may want you to be at AO2 before you can be to AO4 and then jump to AO8. So um, it'll do that for you too. Gotcha, let's see, I'm trying to combine a bunch of questions here. We got a lot of good stuff. Um, Spencer, before we're, we're trying to end at the top of the hour. Spencer, I don't want to forget this. If people have more questions, how can they contact you? Uh, the best way is uh, just email sales at smartdeploy.com and then myself or one of my Subject matter experts will get you the best service we can. Um, just sales at smartdeploy.com or email or call us at 888-7-DEPLOY. Again, 888-7-DEPLOY. We're generally, uh, we're, on, we're based out of Seattle, um, so we're generally, you know, 8 to 5 Pacific Standard Time running around the office. But, uh, yeah, give us a call or shoot us an email, and we love to talk about this stuff and happy to help however we can. Yes, yeah, so there's quite a few questions where people are asking about very specific scenarios and actually also... Um, wanting one-on-one -on -one demos, which obviously isn't a perfect venue for a webinar, but the information that Spencer just provided is going to be the best way to learn about Smart Deploy. And let's see, let's grab one more here. Uh, ooh, interesting. <laughs> Some well, of these are real interesting. They're wanting to know if you change hard drive formats, uh, if you're upgrading or downgrading the file system, how does Smart Deploy handle that? Uh, I'm guessing one, that they're talking about maybe going from NTFS to FAT32 potentially. Yeah, I mean, the inverse. Yeah, basically, however you set up your golden VM is what we'll capture, make a whim of, and then we're we're doing we're doing NTFS quick formatting on the drive, and we just blow the thing away. I mean, if you think about it, we're booting the target device into Windows PE. Windows PE is a really light version of uh, Windows, and we're doing that mostly to ensure that no files are in use or locked in any way and so in that phase we get to do whatever we want on the target hard disk so we're going to reformat the whole hard drive so if it was a you know a fat 32 disk and you want to put windows you know 10 on it, it's going to get formatted with ntfs and it'll just do it all for you um one one last thing brad as well we do have a uh, request a demo right in the uh, link right in the main nav of our website so for those of you that were interested in one-on-one -on -one demos, I'd go ahead and hit that button and uh, we'll get in touch to schedule something up with you. There is a pre-recorded demo, there's a weekly group demo, or there's the option for one-on-one um, -on -one demos as as, uh, as the case may need to be. Absolutely. Well, uh, everybody, we very much appreciate everybody coming, a highly engaged audience actually. Some very good questions here and I'm sure that the team will be digging through this and helping everybody out. Uh, and as always, if you have more questions, Spencer dumped his information. Be sure to reach out because he is clearly the person and the expert about this stuff. And uh, as always, guys, this has been another webinar on Therat.com with Smart Deploy. Happy to have you here, and we will catch you guys next time. Thanks for coming along for the ride.